This is the blank sheet. The first attempt, well, attempt is first go, but as people recall, maybe Dave forgot to um, switch the video on. Going back to, um, fortunately, or maybe it was a portent that I guess something horrible was going to happen. She sketched out two of these little images of sitting ball. This one's portrait, a bit smaller view, but it's all there, all the same. Uh, same issues, same problems. Um, so we've got two reference images. This which I think it looks more like some out of Hollywood that, and that's supposed to be the original um, image of Chief Sitting Bull. As I say, you recall, I've created a, what I've done is I've turned this image into just a line image, just straight line, and use the lines, the dark areas, to add more information to my picture. That's the reason I was saying I've, I've started to add more worry lines, age lines on my image, which I thought was a neat idea, because it's really difficult with a two-dimensional image to create that sort of three-dimensional feel that you get when you, you know, draw an oval and then put the, the line across and then marry them up to the features of the face. Then you get it. You can start thinking of a ball, which is what a human head or an oval ball. It's not so easy with these things. So next portrait, we'll try and get that there. Um, <clears throat> A quick word about brushes I'm using. Well, I don't use that many actually. I don't, I don't have many to hang. This paper stuff here everywhere. One inch flat brush. Nothing special. It's a very fine, real sable or anything. It's acrylic. The guy I get them off, this is a graduate, graduate, um, don't know if it's De La Rowney. yeah, De La Rowney graduate brushes, they're quite good though, well thought of, well regarded, classic number two rigger, always, that's the finish of the painting off at the end, fan brush, I like the fan brush, sometimes you can do the whole picture of a fan brush, so what's that? That's one, two, three, four brushes. Five brushes. There's a number six round there. Will be upset, hasn't it? Probably dried out. Bit of a worry when they bend, but if they do bend, make them damp and soak them in really concentrated sugar water and just leave them for a few days. Usually straightens them out. That's all I've got, really. The other brushes that I use, this is for Jennifer, really, is um, some Rosemary & Co. brushes. These are handmade brushes. The, the ones, these ones are evergreen, they're called. They were actually for oil paints, but they work really well. They hold paint well on everything. Quite enjoy them. Even though I've got a tray full of other paints. The other thing I was discussing yesterday, oops, was my palette. I say I haven't changed it for absolute ages, weeks, months now. And uh, it's on the watercolour online website that I created. There's a a diagram of all the colours, but um, 
today's theme or yesterday's theme and i'll carry it on today was using flesh what colors for flesh what, what color do you use and i was advocating the um, the usefulness of buying you can buy it straight in the tube um i've got yeah there's, there's a sort of comes in a tube there you go it's in russian because they're saint petersburg um paints that i recommend it comes in a tube and just top it up you can buy a, a tray like that what are these things called i can't remember <laughs> um anyway you can buy them in a block like that and when that runs out just top it up with the um squeezy stuff and so as if you recall i was on about make if you haven't got flesh then mix your own raw sienna and alzerian crimson or in my case i'm using rose madder which i like but it's so strong remember it's awful you need just a i'm gonna wipe that off now just a sec you don't need hardly any rose madder or alzheimer and crimson to give you that flesh tone it does work invariably you need to apply a bit of water to it i'm just going to tidy up this area here for me to clean my palette but I'm going to do today I want to use that do but um yeah so you you can thin that down with water there's no reason why you can't add a little bit of white as well if you want to to give it that real beigey light flesh tint But water's you can water it down. But if you recall, one of the things I'm going to do today, which I'm going to use, is to, with this darker flesh mix that I've just done, first off, I'm going to go over the hard lines, the very lines, so I can keep calling them, on the face. Strong action. Just gently go over them. I, I'm, these are the lines, the pencil lines that I've put in. Are they are the what the lines that you know the strong? Call them worry lines, but the strong strong. Agey, agey details of the face. So before I start anything, I'm just going to make those darker. And the top lip is much darker than the bottom. Lip. There's a bit of the side of this. I'm, what I'm doing is looking at this black, in, black and white image. And just sort of the shadier side of the face, really. And just blocking the darker bits in first. I don't. There's two options with this sort of this thing. You can, with the start of this part, you can either do it as a, as a very light wash of. The dark of the very light, lightest skin tone you can see, or what I'm doing here is looking for all the darker shades of the skin. Some there, and then let them dry, and then put a light wash over the over the whole thing, and try and let it blend in. Sometimes you get quite a nice picture without doing it much else. To start off really well. 
Just looking for shadier tones. And if you recall, talking yesterday about the complementary color, what color do we say the shady, the shadow elements of the flesh? And it was to add green to it. So if we want a shady chef, shady chef, a shady, a shady skin tone, you get your ordinary and just tease a bit of green in, and you'll get that really lovely shady tone that you can blend in to some of your areas. Maybe that was a what a, a way to start it off anyway. Putting the shadows in first, really. That's what we're doing. Not where I think they are. Just looking around his face. A few more. Just keep plugging away and put them in. But the green gives you that nice more shadow tone, especially the nostrils, the nose. One of the reasons for doing this is after you've done all those pencil lines, if you, well I find, if you put a, a wash of colour over the whole whole thing, you tend to paint them out, so you didn't spend the rest of the, or well, quite a bit of painting, trying to find your pencil marks or your you know guidelines well if you put them in at the start like you're doing if you're painting in oils you would do this way put them in at the beginning there's no other fresh tones are there just gonna extend a bit under the lip And there's a lovely piece under there. So just a tiny bit of green in amongst the flesh tone that you've mixed up and you'll get a, a shadowy tone. Could use grey, I suppose, or a shade of grey, light grey. Might give it a nice transparent feel to it. Anyway, that's set off quite nice. Next port of call I'm going to put the background. And seeing as today's theme is based on highlighting the, the flesh tone that you get, you can sort of use it such a, uh, such a flexible colour Use it in skies, beach tones, if you're doing beaches, um, all kinds of areas, but I'm going to use it in the background. This is just my using my mop to make the um, everything but the pencil lines, my image wet. Try and get in between the feathers. Some clean water, get it all nice and smooth that out of the way. So, this is a more of an extended image than the other one. Don't know about his shoulder, it looks huge. Something not right there, isn't it? Hmm. Just thinking about it. I've done there. It's definitely gone off at a tangent. Scale it back. Little rubber? I think so. Don't rub out with water as it smudges things. That's a lesson learned. Damp. 
still just clean water going over all the background, Mr. Body, if we can. And there. Right, now I'll get some of that. I'm just going to use the flesh tone that I've got in here. If you've got one mixed up, I'll just drop it in. I'm conscious that I'm not going to use any more than three colours. Why not? On top of a layer of more than three, you'll end up with mud. Even three can sometimes be a bit. I just fancy a pastely, softer shade. But there we go. That's a bit stronger here and there. And next colour, I'm going to add some green to it. Hopefully, it's still nice and moist. Got some more Ooh, that <laughs> looked a bit strong, but that's a bit stronger than the one I did previously. Wouldn't hurt. Just while it's damp, I'm just going to drop it in and prove that what I said just now doesn't always come true. I'm probably going to end up using more than three colours, but not there and the one on top. They're, they're going to be mingled in amongst some, you know feather in them in amongst themselves really so they're not physically layered whoosh straight on top of each other the other color is burnt sienna so i've gone fresh burnt sienna which is that one so i'm going to drop some of that in just to what i'm trying to achieve i think i'm is a sort of scumble smoky just a little bit of blue just to put some shit some shadow on the well the blue with the burnt sienna will go grey which should do give us a sort of a grey tone just that this is a bit darker than the one I did previously but they uh, they're always different I'm trying to think if I can get any shadows way one side getting more light than the other Don't look it. just add a bit more burnt sienna drop it in and that'll make the blue go a nice warmer color so you need balance if you think about it if you put something on one part of the picture the chances are you need to level it up by putting it in the other. One thing you can do, oh, I forgot about this down here, I don't know about this mess. Bit of flesh in there. It's going to be stuck now with that, that pencil line under there. Mm -hmm. Have we got a plan B? Mm -hmm. Yeah, think up some of it. And the feathers. Luckily this has got a nice tip to it, this brush. I might do. Ooh, let's turn it upside down. Let the water do some work. You won't be able to see that very well. Yeah, that's I'm at a sort of a 30 degree angle with my painting. Just wanted that sort of smoky, atmospheric, you know, background, an old <clears throat> smoky wall of some description. That should have dried off quite well on the end. Next stage for me, I'm, I'm advocating is to use the mop actually. If I just get some, some of the excess water off. Okay. 
I'm just going to put clean water all over the flesh tone. Hopefully, without disturbing the colour that I put in just now. And now, with my lighter, you know, if you look at the the subject's uh, face, want look look for the lighter skin tone, and that's going to be our base wash but now i've got it all wet what i'm doing is i'm just letting it flow in let the water feather the colors okay it looks a bit just a hint of red in there warm it up a bit, it just looks a bit, um, a bit pale. We're the pale skins, not the Indians, Native Americans, to get it right. It's a question of looking at our reference image and looking for the, the darker shades. And just drop in, colour in, let it, you can let it run, some there by that nose, just going to let it have fun really. Could be an early lunch. Let's say this is really a recap from my mistake yesterday, so Still got some, if I take some of that, some of that fleshy tone and add a bit of green to it, that'll give me a nice shady, oops, poked his eye out then, uh, nice, some nice shady tones. So just looking at your picture, think where are the shadowy bits, where the light's darker, just add them in, drop it in, and because it's still nice and damp, it they'll it will just blend really well. Yep, 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 yep. It's definitely a shady bit over this side. Look at that. Bear in mind that watercolor does dry fainter so I think that line could be so you can get a rigger and drop some extra details here and there. Yep, I'm gonna play with it too much, but equally if you look at your um a slightly smaller brush here. A little bit of tissue. But still look at your image, the reference image, and look for any any highlights and just lift them off with a dry brush. Just tissue in one hand, brush in the other, and just lift them out, lift them back, and you'll get some more depth, there's a nice spit there by his chin. Just lift, just, oh, this brush is useless. Stick one up, and bigger one. It's got a nice point on it. And just lift, just look for any, any there's definitely one down, down the nose. Just pull it, just lift it off. Almost. And then again, it's a darker bit in the corner of the eye, isn't it? You're an artist, man. I think. 
There's a little light bit there on this tube. <laughs> this can be quite a time consuming event. It just makes me laugh. You spend ages putting paint on and then lifting it all off. <laughs> just want to lift a little bit off in there where his bottom lip is. Just look for any highlights on his face in the photo and just lift them off and you'll find that you'll get that little bit of dimensional that's a bit too dark now isn't it so i'm going to lift that off get back to the you're wondering why i got gloves on i was out in the garden with the dog and I forgot to take them off, truth's now. Just lift them off. Any highlights? Definitely a highlight here. Where my uh, quite enjoying this. We haven't put any paid any attention to his eyes yet. Yeah? Yeah. But if you get the drift, that this is the, a neat way of finding some highlights, just bringing some life back into it, just lift it off. Bear in mind, be careful because watercolour, it will fade back quite, quite a lot. It's definitely a shadow. It's a, bit more of a shadow tone here, which is just a flesh. You can use a darker flesh there and a teeny weeny bit of green in it just to try and. There's an area just here that I think maybe it's too wet at the moment, but it definitely has a a jowly cheek to it. It's just a bit too damp. Oh, it's, it's spreading too much. Come on, we'll come back to that in a minute. Shame about that. Got a big dollop of water here. Right. One of one of the things I do a lot these days is I use um, some white, which I've got in the bottom here, bottom of my palette. Some of this white. And I won't use it strong, but as I was saying yesterday, some of the colours, man-made colours, beach huts and these things. They're solid, they're, they're not transparent. So I tend to like use a little bit of white, permanent white gouache. Okay, it's not very, it's very watery, but I just put a, a subtle, um, so I'm gonna crop this off here on the final image. So I'm not gonna, too excited about the fact that it's not come down enough. Water is acting as a base, really, for when I put some more, some other colours on, just to, yeah. I think I need to brush here. Should be able to extend that down a bit. Water. Ease it down. I don't know what colour it was. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'm on the edge of your sheet. You can utilise it and flare it down. So I'm going to crop this off anyway. So I'm happy about it. 
call from Mark's mobile. from mum's mobile I have to hang on a minute it's gonna have to be a pause and come back mum's mobile that's dodgy Well, that's a whoops, two minute break. It was a freak phone call. When it's your mum and she's 86 years old, do you attend to stop and check out what's going on? Uh, right, well, let's I think the face has dried off a little bit. So, what I'm going to do is my usual routine and put a little bit of, if I get a little bit, teeny little bit of. Put my palette there. Just, uh, I'm thinking eyes now. I've got a little bit of green on the brush and put a little dot of eye. Now that eye is not as far over, is it? Just to give it a nice background tone. There. Brushes here. Oh. Okay. oh, sit on it, that's the thing. Not a one trick pony. Any brush will do. Just using a bit of white to um, on his coat, on his tunic a tunic rather than a coat. Might help me over here actually where that background is. Find some shadow tones. Kind of shadow tones. Well a good start for a shadowy tone is blue and and again our Alzerian Crimson, which is so flipping strong. It will give you a, if you get more blue than purple, but it's so intense. <laughs> to cool it down or warm it up, you've had some burnt sienna or a bit of yellow. Got tinder yellow there, that'll soften it down. Still see a much it's a bit better. It's only for one little bit of picture as well. <laughs> Just to put on his tunic. Dear oh dear. I think I might use the rigger actually. Just to on the pencil lines where I've put the shadow bits of his tunic. Just gonna add a little few lines. This is um, plain air expressionism now, because we haven't got a clue what colour it would have been in real life. So just having to make up, make it up a bit. Uh, just add that in. Don't know if I, the sequence, there is no, um, right and wrong sequence, it's just clean water on the brush, just to spread those lines. I'm not sure he would have had a purple kind of tunic. Mm -hmm. As now, this is 2021, anything goes. I'm just using clean water to let that color blend, but I've got a little, put that little background of white on so a nice confident feeling that it will blend softly not harsh don't know why i'm drawn to add in some yellow 
that's a little bit of burnt uh, raw sienna to warm it up. Oh, fortune favours the brave. Maybe not. I'm just going to drop some of that yellow onto the purple areas. Less is more, I think, is the, the key, really. I'll try not to make it look too much like he's wearing pyjamas. And a bit of burnt sienna will warm it up as well. Raw burnt sienna is that one. Just top of that one. And have a look at the picture, I think. Where, are there are shadows anywhere? And then just blend it around, move it around. But that lovely little bit of white is is just acting as a a catalyst to make the, the paint sort of flow. Plenty of water on this brush as well. Just dipping it in and letting it flow along. Lovely. Still got plenty of shadow. Got some burnt sienna. Just looking at the black and white image. It's just burnt sienna and some of that shadow that's too strong. So I'm just dropping some of that in. Drop it down where his hair is. It's definitely going to be a shadow in there. And on that side, where it makes his chin, just drop a bit in. It's not too bad. Just clean water. Just blend that in a bit. I have to air dry this in a minute. There was a few things I was thinking about on his face just now, and that was using some of our flesh tone, with a little hint of green on it. This is that. I was going to call it a shadow a flesh shadow tint tone really just wanted to put some these lines down here it's got like his jaw line jowls or whatever they're called it's got one there got that one which is a bit too strong now but when when the painting is really dry um, I can lift that off. We've also got this dark shade area in his eye. Yeah. Still working, it's probably a very nice man, but by all accounts, history says he was not an old. Not a nasty man, but quite a, a warm-hearted chief. And you did a lot to help his people. Not hurt them. Trying his best, I suppose, in those wild. American days, mind you, it's still like that now. Right, we'll spread this over. It's still quite damp, so I've got um, things are sort of blending a little bit. Once you get the rigor in your hand, the whole world changes anyway. 
Just keep going. Add little bits here and there. And soften them down later. It's like a shadow here. From water underneath. Just let it blend down. There you go. And it's definitely some real nice dark shadows in here. It's got those necklines. Something like that. Anyway, clean water, soften it down, and then move off. Just let it do its bit and come back perhaps later. I'm, not, I'm aware that I'm not doing as well as I would like getting the it's all right. I just wanted to get more more of a shadow. more of the craggy lines of his features to come up, which I think is going to be one of those, you're going to have to muck around for ages with the rigor, just teasing, looking at a bit and teasing somewhere. This is just a little shadowy tone I've got on the brush. I'll put it there, but it doesn't really need that much. But we can just lift it off and dab the brush on the tissue. See what happens. Tease it across. When in doubt, walk away. Well, I like that bit. Two lights gone there. Push it around. I think I'll just um, bit of, on the flesh theme, I'm going to add some flesh to his jacket. Well, I'm just drawn to that. I think it needed it. Flesh, not pink. I didn't want pink. I'm ending up with pink. Probably. Maybe not then. Um, I don't think Indians wear pink. The ones in the movies I went to see never did. As I say, I'm gonna. Why couldn't he wear pink? The light reflecting of his red skin. Well, I like it. That's the main thing. Add some more shadows in. Have a, just use the brush on its side and, it's, and push it and you can get some really lovely shadowy effects. If you can't give it some depth. It's all local colour, isn't it? Because it's colour that I'm using on the flesh and the background. So I haven't really used that many colours. I don't know quite what happened with that shadow tone I was trying to introduce there, but there's still some burnt sienna. Darkish tone there, so I can utilize that. 
get rid of some of that pinky feel. Still got this area here that I'm perplexed about. That's not going to be touched. Well, not too much with that until it dries. This a bit of fun, a bit of blue. Some burnt sienna. That'll give us a nice grey tone. We can always add a little bit of flesh to it to soften it down a bit even more. I don't know what I was going to do with it now. I think it was just add a bit, a few bits here and there. It's too much on the brush. Always use your finger to push it around. Hmm. The, the idea I had in mind, but okay. Right, I'm going to stop for a sec, let that dry, and then we're going to have a go at that the hair. Just need the background to dry for a minute. Looking good though. Right, hopefully no more interruptions. It's dried off quite a bit now. We're going to have a little go at some, some hair, but sticking with the theme of using flesh <laughs> or a flesh tint tone, just to prove how versatile it is as much as anything else. I'm going to go start off with clean water. So I'm just going to clean water over the whole hair area, just to make it. I want I want the colour just to flow like I did everywhere else. It's just a basic watercolour methodology, really. Let the paint flow. I mustn't forget his feathers either before I finish. So, get some of this lovely fleshy tint and just let it, maybe I'm good at time of hydrating it a bit more than that, I think. Anyway, I'm going to go with it in the water. While it's damp, we'll add some darker colours in. Always looks a bit dramatic at the start, but once we drop in the other colours, it'll be slightly different. This is the um, evergreen oil painting brush on the end. Just for a. It's quite nice, that colour, actually. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to start off with some burnt sienna and add a little bit of this shadow tone to it for now. Plenty of water, and I'm just going to drop it in. Let it do its thing. Put pencil lines where I think the um, the folds in his braid is. So I'm just going to put darker shadow on that. Do 
Du, du. Just build it up. Darker color. We'll add some some blue and burnt umber together. I'm just laying it straight on top of that shadow, which didn't really work that well. It was attacked by Rose Madder. Such a dark color, an intense color. Might need a smaller brush now. As that dries, I'm gonna, because it's damp, I'm just gonna flick in the darks real dark so we can get some leave a few highlight bit areas if you look you can see there's like fainter fainter areas so I'm not putting any dark paint on so that would give it a look a look of texture and depth where's Carol the hairdresser when we need her <laughs> Having fun. Just drop it in here as well. <gasps> that was a lot. But I know I know there's this really dark area over here, so I'm gonna drop a lot in there. Just let it flow. Making a it's where I've put these pencil lines where the braid so I'm just, these are the bits I'm concentrating on because they're the sort of shadowy areas of the this hair going down. Apart from over here, it's really gone. Whoosh. Once we leave some of the undercolor flesh areas, it will dry back really well. Give it that extra bit of texture. Mm -hmm. You can always lift them out later but well, it does seem to me to be more lighter areas over this over the right hand side as I'm looking at it mm -hmm. and if I remember right there's a bit here that forms a little triangle yeah, not too bad. It's a bit purpley. No, it's not. It's drying back. Let's try and I'm not going to put too much more colour in it. I can always add some later. As I said previously, we can just add a get some watercolour pencils and just add a few extra highlights and what have you later. I've got that shadow tone now so just grab the rigger and I'm just going to tighten up a few areas on here looking for shapes like a little you see like dark shadows that form little, like little triangles and that does do that there in his hair it does come out there And it's a distinct dark wave over this side as well. Be nice to emphasize. Same at the top there. Mm -hmm. And make it really watery mix of that shadowy tint tone i'm just going to put a bit of it in there bit there it's like a little tone there maybe a smidgen of it on his lips to make it a little bit shorter not too bad, and the nostrils can go in a bit more. 
and also while well, I've got a little bit of that brainy colour, I'm going to put it on the pupil of the eye, just not on the middle, just on the edge, just to darken it up. And I've also got it in the eyelid. Top, ooh, it's got a star in there. Never mind, we'll lift it off late, later. Getting to the stage where I'm feeling quite content with this picture now. Still got some of these sh shadow areas. So, just using the, the shadowy bits in my palette. Just drop them in, a few highlights here and there. And see it if you look at the black and white image that there are you know slightly darker areas so just pop add some shadow to it there's a line here that we can put on definitely darker over here just tease it in A little bit of clean water and on the other on the edge of it just wish it in gives it a feeling of, of a fold you know of a, a shadow Depends on what a bit of clean water can do really. and might crop the bottom of his um pigtails, ponytails, call them what you like, off. I can always lift some of these out when it's dried back with a dry brush and clean water. Let's have a look, Let's see if there's any more. Lovely. I'll add a bit of shadow in. Decisions, decisions, isn't it? The good thing if you've got rigor is once you hold it on its edge and flick it, you can get some lovely sort of shady tonal effects. Gives it that extra little bit of him fade up from here I'm just laying it flat push, pulling the brush off just to make it this paper is two rivers me two rivers two rivers um, two rivers from Jackson's and it's um, a not finished which is slightly rough works really well I think I'll add a little bit of I'm just scrubbing sort of scumbling across some of the shadow areas I put in earlier I'm quite content with this I'm not going to do much more Maybe a few more lines here and there. And just a little bit more there. Makes his nose stand out a bit. And underneath it. Now, now. Just a hint of it there, clean water, and just like that, just underneath it, just smooth it down, let it blend in, and it looks natural then. Hmm. Same with that there. That's it. I'm not going to do much more, but I will do. Yes.
make this area damp over here. We have to use the mop here. Make this area really dark. Add some more flesh to it. So this is going to be a yucky bit. Too cute an angle here, but I just want to let that fizzle its way and cover up that those horrible pencil lines that I did that won't go away. Let's take this piece of, piece of wood out to lay it flat. It doesn't run, I want it to sit there. Also, has consequences when you do this because, it's, like I say, to balance it, I'm going to have to spread it a bit further up. I don't mind, it'll dry back quite nice. I'm peeling off the wall back there. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Got a little bit of white, which is slightly more opaque that I can drop in. Go on the brush. Just feather that into the background. Like I'm always saying, it's your painting, it's up to you what, what goes on on it. <laughs> Not everything is perfect. Sorted. That's going to fade, dry back quite nicely, I think. Thinking about it, it wouldn't hurt to add a little bit more over that side as well, over this side just a bit. Clean water, just balance it up. That sort of greyish. Turn. Spread that around. That's it. Chief sitting ball. Oh. oh, no, it's not. It's not finished yet. <clears throat> oh. Thought I was getting a, an early. I was going to say an early lunch, but it isn't because I've had it. Um, I quite enjoy using this. Um, evergreen oil brush. It's got a really stiff point. So you can really direct your brush exactly where you want it. So in this headdress, technical term, I'm just using a bit of um, Watercolour, well, it's permanent white gouache, extra. I'll show you what that is in a sec. Just to put a, a base wash of that on. I've still got this yucky brown colour. God knows where that came from. It was the shadow area of my flesh. I'm going to drop a few bits of that in, and then a really nice dark bit point on the end of each, on the top of each. A bit of burnt amber and some blue that gives us a really dark tone. I always check it on the edge and then just drop, drop a bit on the top of each feather. A bit of clean water on that just to tease it down because I'm not on an angle now. It's not going to flow. To flow. I think when it dries, I might be inclined to stick a little bit of um, perhaps get a really dark watercolor pencil and just just put some something on the tip, you know, to really make it dark. Anyway, there's a, a feather line through here. 
There you go. Disguise that there. Otherwise, I can clean water and or just tease that background across. So it'll sp chill it out. There you go. Big Chief. Sitting ball, part two. Mm -hmm. Dry off nice. Oh, when it dries, we can add a few more bits of foam on it. Oh, hang on. The camera froze. Let me just see if I can unfreeze it. It only froze a minute ago. Don't know what happened there. My camera froze for a few minutes. So as a recap, all I've done is tidied up the feathers. I think it's not too bad now. It's got a warmth about it. Still need to put some extra paint on there at some point. Being such a dark line. Probably have to build up a few colours because it fades back. But I'll just keep dropping in bits of white and flesh on top onto it like that. Just let it wander away. Because it doesn't matter because I wanted it, the background to look like a appealing sort of Horrible. We call it distressed wall anyway. It's still got wavy bits in it at the moment, so if that's all going to dry back, I'm really loving that. Uh, I can zoom out a bit. Zoom in. Ooh. Yeah. Gives it an extra. Juice. Frame on him. There you go. Big sigh. So a few bits to tighten up when it all dries back nicely. A few areas of run backs and dry backs, but just clean water on a brush and we can soften and feather all that back in. Or failing that, get a little watercolour pencil and just blend it in a bit. Yeah. I'm chuffed with that. Glad I had to do two now. Maybe a little bit of softening there. Thank you. 